Immigration can be difficult. Sometimes you feel strangled and you just want it to stop. It slowly eats you away. After being in America for 15 years, you want it to end and to be able to call a place home. America has paid for most of my education, including high school, undergrad, my MA, and now my PhD studies. Now I just want to be able to give back to the country that raised me, to the fullest of my extent, to the country that I consider my home. For the past 15 years, I have wanted more every year to have the possibility to become a permanent resident and eventually an American citizen. In many ways, I consider myself one in spirit, but I do feel sometimes as an unwanted child. Unfortunately, while my brother and I came before we were 15 and legally are considered child arrivals, we both have a temporary status, and we feel somewhat in the shadows, feeling that we are Americans, but we're unable to call America our home. My family came to America in 1998. We were looking for better opportunities, but in 1999, due to visa limitations, my parents had no choice, and they had to leave the United States. The next few years included many struggles. My brother and I had to live by ourselves in Gainesville, Florida. I was only 15 then, while my brother had just turned 17. We had to quickly learn how to live on our own, and there was little room for errors. We had to sink or swim. My brother eventually found a scholarship swimming in Washita Baptist University, but during my senior year in high school, my parents could no longer afford to rent a house for me. So I knew a man called Sonny. Uh, he was an ex-cop, and he took in exchange students every year. And while Sonny was a nice person, he had a strange fetish that was very uncomfortable. He liked to take pictures of shirtless young men. Um, soon after I left, Sonny was arrested and on child molestation charges for 10 years. Luckily, I was also able to follow my brother and obtain a scholarship to Washita Baptist University. My brother and I did well in high school. I ended up being the junior class president. I was also the high school swimmer male of the year for one of the years in high school and graduated with a 4.3 GPA. In Wachita, I continued to do well academically. I graduated with four different majors, honors and more. Rinaldo, on the other hand, graduated with a business major and two specializations, so as multiple Division II All-American Swimmer Awards. We did pretty well in Arkansas, but in order to stay in America, we needed to find someone willing to sponsor us or we had to go back to school. For every degree level, you are allowed to work for a year and try to find a sponsor. If you can't find it, you either obtain a new degree and try again, or you have to go back home. After graduating, my brother opted to work for various businesses and obtained a pretty good record working for Walgreens, Chick-fil-A, and eventually Snap-on, where he now trains new employees. He's a pretty successful businessman. I didn't try to work right after my undergraduate degree. Instead, I decided to go on to graduate school. I had the luck or the blessing of obtaining a two-year assistantship at the University of Florida. There, I earned an MA degree while cheering for the Florida Gators and helping Buholz High School win the Girls State Championship as their high school assistant swim coach, as well as a couple of state runner-up titles. But most important of all to me, I had the chance to meet my wife, Ellie, an international student from England, attending the same master's program. While marrying her allows me to officially be able to leave America and migrate to England, that's not the struggle that we wanted to fight for. My brother and I felt that America is the place we wanted to be, and we continue to fight the citizenship struggle, which is to become an American. After teaching a year of middle school, once I graduated from my master's program, I was unable to find a sponsor. And luckily, however, I was able to obtain a one-year assistantship at the University of Minnesota, where I started a PhD study in organizational leadership, policy, and development. My wife came with me to Minnesota, and she was able to work for the university for a year. This allowed us to stay in America. However, when she finished that year of OPT, as a foreign student, she was also had to either find a sponsor, which she didn't, or go back to school. In this case, she opted to start law school at the university, which offered her a pretty good incentive package. All in all, we had many blessings along the way. But while we would like to call Minneapolis our home, 
despite our efforts, we, if we cannot find a sponsor the year after we graduate, even when America has paid for all of our education, really, and we love, love it here, we would love to stay, we will have to leave the States. America, however, is my home, and to me, the citizenship requirements f restrict us from fully contributing to society, from being entrepreneurs, from fully using our talents to make America better. While we may still work things out, this long road of sinking or swimming has wore us down. Despite our efforts and achievements, we are not acknowledged as Americans. And while America is the land of the free, these policies shackle you and limit your possibilities. A common question people ask is why have we not benefited from DACA deferred action? Well, unfortunately, my brother and I were not illegally here in 2012. So even though we've been here since childhood, since we were teenagers in the United States, we do not qualify for DACA. However, DACA is anyhow a temporary measure, and hopefully through a long-term measure, through a policy at the national level, people like my brother, my wife, and I will be able to stay. Thank you.